Welcome to the StockMinter.com studios here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I'm your stock mentor, Brian Johnson, making professional trading simple. We had a beautiful, beautiful day here today. Uh, up in the 40s today, almost 50 degrees today. It's just supposed to be warmer tomorrow. So welcome to the beautiful Black Hills of South Dakota. Everybody thinks it's super cold here, but that is not always true. I think we're contending, if not beating, some of those lower Florida cities, actually. So, and without the humidity. So yay for us. It's actually very, very nice when you're used to 10 degree weather. This feels like a heat wave. We're growing our own oranges up here. And yes, I'm depressed from yesterday. We played a valiant game, but the Packers just couldn't pull it out. Defense could not help us. They could not stop the Cardinals. So ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. We should. There's no way you should ever score 40 points in a game and not win. Absolutely ridiculous. So I'm still hurting from that little loss but oh well it is what it is i guess there's always next year <sighs> all right so on to the markets we saw a little move up today <clears throat> uh by the dow and the s p and i do mean a little here's the uh, once again we're seeing gaps and so hard to play these uh the indices when they gap like that uh, especially when they don't move the rest of the day we get a little bit of a of a movement towards the morning and then the rest of the day is kind of flat uh you could have played the indices uh, up a little bit except for the nasdaq now the nasdaq uh, gapped up moved down we'll see that in apple as well that was that uh, same thing reflected there um but the uh, the markets themselves, when they gap up like that, it's very difficult to find direction. You don't know if they're going to fill that gap, if they're going to move back up, what they're going to do. Even when you make your move, in this case, it doesn't move very far. We had a total move up today in the Dow of 45 points. It's not really that much. Uh, once again, when we can't find big moves or good trades in the indices, where do we look? We look to the stocks. and um, The stocks, fortunately, played out very well. My picks, I was only like 50% on my picks for football this weekend, but I think my stock picks went a little better. <laughs> so we'll look at those here in just a second. Uh, we are up and above that 10600 level that I had talked about, um, but just a, a very slow, gradual grind upwards today. Not much uh, uh, in the way of... Um, uh, of movement. We had a gap up followed by a quick and sharp move down in the Dow. Uh, the NASDAQ kind of stayed to the downside, whereas the Dow found its way back to the upside. I would assume that would have something to do with maybe Alcoa. I think it's about to report earnings, and that was probably one of the things that helped prop the Dow up today. So with uh, Alcoa moving well, I, it, it went down, then it moved back up. I just took a look at it. And uh, same thing as the Dow. You will see some extra volatility now as we come into the earnings season once again. Now stocks have a tendency to move up into earnings. Will they do what they have been doing? And that's report well, gap up, and uh, same story, different verse. Or will it now change and earnings won't be maybe near as good or the market won't see forward guidance as well? This could really add to the volatility of the markets over the next couple weeks. Uh, all the more reason to be very careful with your trading. Uh, let's move right to the daily. And you can see the Dow pushing up and over that 10,600 area that it was at uh, most of last week. Uh, closed just barely above it last week. And then today up, you know, like I said, about 45 points. Not really much of a move. Looks like a bigger move than what it really was. Only about 45 points a day on the Dow. But still upwards motion. NASDAQ moving up uh, or gapping up to start the day, moving back down, pulling right back into perfect re support here at the 20 and the 50 period moving uh, averages. This is going to make for some very staunch support. A break of that could make for a very good short trade. Uh, more conservative would be maybe below the 1870 mark, but notice that we're still, yes, high basing up in here still the same type of movement a little bit more obvious on a daily as you can see us move up sideways up down a little bit back up sideways it just the markets refusing to give this up uh, bears still have absolutely no interest in that uh, you'll see that reflect in the VIX here in just a little while uh, the NASDAQ on a weekly, it's only Monday, won't worry about that quite yet. SPX on a 60-minute pushing up and above at the very end of the day, back to 11.46 after gapping up. So you can see it kind of doing the same thing. Gap up, move back down. I mentioned it reached my 11.45 
uh, mark, my resistance was still between 11.45 and 11.50. We hit 11.49.74 for a high today. So once again, 11.50, that's our mark. I'm going to stick with that. Uh, it's held once already. Let's see if it'll hold again. Uh, it's, it appears, or it seems, what we're seeing is the market will move up to resistance and just pound away at it before it finally wears the, the bears out and then pushes right on through. So we might see more of that as well. A push above 11.50 is your next uh, uh, entry to the long side. So uh, same motion, uh, gap up, move down and then a, a push back towards the upside by the end of the day. The NASDAQ was the only one not able to get all the way back up, but I really wouldn't be too worried about that. The tech stocks are usually very strong, especially coming into the next earnings season. We could see a big run up in them. Keeping in mind here, we are up quite a few days in a row, looking for maybe a little rollover and a retest of this area here uh, over the next week or so. But clearly up and above this overhead resistance, making new highs. No reason to be uh, uber bearish at this point. Uh, stay with the trade. Just be careful because it's options expiration week that you're not over trading. SPX on a weekly. It's Monday. Won't worry about that quite yet. VIX on a daily. Okay, so we see it gap down and move back up again. Um, now, where uh, would we expect this area to be? Well, if we go right to a weekly, the dotted line. Same line we've been following for a while, and sure enough, that's where it kind of got down to gapped, or, and moved right back up above it. So we're close enough, though. We'll see where this goes by the end of the week, but I would not, I mean, do not be surprised to see us hit this mark down here. Uh, this would be the next logical place for it to find some support, and that's this big green line here. Uh, this move down almost reached it all by itself today. So uh, good and bad. It's bad for the bears because you guys keep waiting and waiting and waiting for a move to the downside. It's good for options players, though, because that uh, lowers the price of a lot of options and makes it more affordable to get in. When and if this VIX ever turns around and starts to uh, scream upwards, that will only add extra value to your options extra quick. Apple on a 60-minute here. You can see it gap up. Now, I wanted to, wanted to get long above the 50-period move.